You're live, man. You're live. <laughs> Let's do this. Hey guys, I'm Amber Page. I'm Josh Combo, and today we're going to be teaching on how to use color map with Amber Page out of Spectrum Studio in Lafayette, Louisiana. We're going to go over on the line tones, how to popular formulate, and what else? Um, how to cancel colors too with it. I feel like that's a new thing out uh, whenever you're removing vivid colors and your clients have a bunch of old leftover color. I think learning how to actually use your vivids in a way to cancel that out and still move forward with your gold color is a big deal. Sweet. Yeah. Well, we're going to give it a couple minutes. We're going to get set up, let some more people join in. And then we'll get started. I'll uh, get started. Yeah. I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> oh, me too. It's been a little long time since we did a lot. Oh, what? I mean, my class, my class was in January, so I haven't talked about this in a while, but. What color lines are we going to be using today? Um, so I typically use Pulp Riot. I'm not a Pulp Riot educator, but I, that is like typically my go-to because I've used it for so long since the color line came out, what, like 2015, I think. Yeah, I think that's right. It's, it's been out for a while. So <laughs> that's typically what I use majority of my vivid coloring. Um, I also, let me see. I got a whole bucket of colors. I don't know about <laughs> colors. Um, so Joyco is my other favorite. I find Joyco offers the biggest range whenever it comes to like pinks and purples. Okay. Um, Pulp Riot really only has a couple few colors that fall in that. Um, but in that range. Yeah, like look, like I have obviously ruby red is my favorite color by them. I have a bunch of them. <laughs> um, I will say too, Guy Tang also offers um, vivid colors. Carvana as well, so we can kind of touch base on a couple different color lines here like I did with my class, but Pulp Riot is my favorite. Sweet. I like the smell of it. I like the consistency of it. I like the way it doesn't fade out super fast. It's my go-to. And we got a little treat for y'all. She's going to teach you how she created this color. Yeah. yeah. So whenever I did my hair color class in January, one of the favorite things that we did was trying to formulate colors together. I would pull up pictures on Pinterest and we would talk about what they think went into it. And I actually had so many colors available that we sampled them out together. Nice. So it was really cool to try and color match it. But uh, whenever I talk about my own hair color, a lot of people are shocked by what I put into it. She just told me and I was like, what? Yeah, so <laughs> we're gonna go over today and why it works and how we do it and uh, what makes it work that way. Awesome. So I think that'd be pretty cool. Um, you ready to get started? Yeah, let's do this, okay. And what page, y'all? Let's talk. So, um, I started doing hair in uh, 2012, and man, the past like five years have really taken off for me as far as like actually being a hairstylist and making a name for myself. So, I specialize in color corrections and vivid coloring. Uh, vivids are probably my number one thing that I do, but when it comes to vivid coloring, you really have to understand the full dynamics of doing hair, which means underlying pigments color levels, what your goal level is to achieve certain colors. If you don't understand what that is, then you're not gonna be able to give your clients exactly what they're looking for. So when it comes to hair, we always see natural pigment. We see black to blondes. When we're lifting though, and everyone's always like, oh, my hair always lifts red. Maybe everyone's hair lifts red. That is completely natural. Your hair is made out of keratin. You need keratin to make your hair strong. You will notice that when you're lifting, you'll go from these dark reds into these yellowish orange tones. This means that you're basically removing the keratin out of your hair. You are simply stripping it away and bringing up these underlying pigments. This is the number one thing that you need to learn whenever it comes to doing hair because this plays a huge role, not just only in vivids, but with your blondes, as well as with your natural colors. If your client wants a red or a purple, you need to understand what their first starting level is at, and then understand what underlying pigments play a part in that color as well. Because your underlying pigments can be your best friend whenever it comes to vivids. It doesn't always have to be something that you need to freak out about or worry about canceling or removing. So, with that being said, this is where color map comes into play. I'm gonna go back to this later and we'll touch base on why these two intertwine together. Um, color map was created by Josh Como here a couple years ago. And this is a booklet, think of it like a coloring book. 
you are simply allowed to play with the colors of it and decide how to formulate your vivids with it. When you open it, you start off with white, which would be presumably your level 10s. Then you got your level nine. Whoop, I missed one. Your level eights, your sevens, your sixes, all the way down to your fives and your fours. Granted, this one obviously looks a little bit more like a five, but this is fairly dark. I really have never truly used my level fives because anyone who does vivids knows that your vivids have to be applied on level sixes and above. Anything under a level six is just gonna look really mucky and very like lacking of depth, which is not what we want whenever it comes to vivids. You want brightness, you want fullness. You wanna make sure that it has some, some shine to it, which you achieve whenever you use those higher levels. So when it comes to vivids and understanding where to put your colors at, it's very tricky. It becomes very difficult sometimes because not everyone's hair lifts properly. Not everyone will hit that level 10. So this is where using your color map is gonna come into play. When you're lifting up your client, let's say your client's a natural level three and you're lifting them, but their scalp is really sensitive and oh my God, they're not wanting to lift anymore because it hurts so bad, even though your lightener is made for sensitive scalps. But these things happen in the real world. Like not everyone's scalp or our hair is meant to be lifted past that level seven. This is where your color map is gonna come into play because when you're formulating, you're gonna be able to take out this little piece of paper. I keep mine in my booklet. I don't ever rip mine out, but I'm gonna show you mine, how I use it. This is mine. I've had this thing for three years now and I love it. Um, you will be able to simply take your color formulation that you've come up with, color match exactly what level your client's roots are sitting at and be able to tell so this is sitting at like a level eight. So that tells me that I need to use this paper when it comes to figuring out exactly what colors I need to formulate with to put on my client's head to get them closer to the goal that they want. Um, I'm trying to think of like where my class, we went, we went so far in depth into underlying pigments we talked about it for like two hours. Um, I guess right now I'm just gonna start off with like showing you guys exactly what Color Map does and how different it looks on different papers. Let me put this one away. I don't want to use my new book. Okay, so everyone knows blue and greens need to be put on a level nine and above. But why is that? Is it because it just makes it look better? I mean, yes, obviously, but also whenever you're doing blues and greens, the underlying pigment inside of hair color will really make it look super mucky and almost like swampy. So this obviously is our level 10 here, and this is Nightfall by Pulp Riot. This is a blue-based blue. -based blue. Um, the reason I say it's blue-based is that that underlying pigment is not anything else. It is not green, it is not purple. This is definitely about three different blues mixed together to create this color. Now what happens, I'm just gonna kind of smear it so that way it doesn't go all over my book. What happens if I can only lift my client to this color, and I still need to put blue in her hair? Well, let's see what this is going to look like because I promise you it's not going to look like anything. It's going to look dirty when you wipe that off. See the green in it? How that just does not, that nobody wants this on their head. This does not look good. So when you get to that issue, what do you do? Well, one, you would pre-tone your client, obviously. Please don't think that you have to just throw vivids on top of pre-lightened hair, you can, in fact, pre-tone your clients. I always pre-tone mine. Um, I highly suggest doing it. It helps the vivid colors have something to stick onto. It helps it last longer. Um, my pre-toners that I use are by Pulp Riot. I'm not going to grab that one. But silver and rose gold. I use these two whenever I'm doing a cool tone color and a warm tone color. Um, basically, all of your warm tone colors are always going to have a pink undertone your silver or your cool tones are always gonna have a blue or green. This silver, if I'm not mistaken, is a bluish green undertone in it, so it's perfect whenever I'm doing this. So when you pre-tone and you cancel out some of this warm color, this blue is gonna look a lot better. Right now it looks like a brown, right? Because obviously blue cancels out red, red cancels out blue, so you basically just canceled out your client's roots with a blue color. 
So let's say you can't pre-tone. You're not able to pre-tone your client. What do you do next? Well, what else counteracts red, green, and purple does? So we're going to add some more nightfall. Let's say my client really just does want a purple or a blue base color. They're like game set. That's what they want. They only want that blue color. Well, this is where having different colors that fall within that color range are going to come into play. None of your clients, vivid wise, should be getting a color straight out of a tube. These colors are customizable for a reason. They are paying for your education. They are paying for your knowledge whenever it comes to mixing up colors. So take advantage of that. Grab some extra colors. Learn what your color's underlying pigments are. You can see I grabbed two different blues just now. This one is more like a cyan blue. The other one is a very lavendery blue. Let's see, you can kind of see what the colors look like in the bowl. They're all different blues. But those blues are going to come into play whenever it comes to applying it to my client's head. And I'm going to now add in this purple. This purple is a pinky purple. And in theory, this should give me it's a very reddish pinky purple. In theory, that this should cancel out enough of the undertone in this map or in my client's hair to still give me the color that I'm going for, which is a pretty blue without looking mucky and worn down on my client's head. I always mix my vivids with a color brush. I don't use metal. Um, there's really no talk of like about it being a, 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 a do or don't kind of thing, it's just personally me. So this is the color that we came up with. So it's really, it almost matches exactly what the nightfall looks like by itself. But as you can see, it has a lot more depth behind it. It doesn't look so empty. So now whenever we swatch it, Look how pretty that is. That looks so much better than what that actual nightfall color looked like. It took out the green within the blue to make it just look a little bit better. I'm gonna if I like smidge it in there. If I wipe it off, apply just a little bit more to it so that way we can truly see what it looks like compared to each other. Doesn't that look so much better? This looks like something that you would be able to put on an underlying pigment of this color. Make sure we show all the cameras that we have. So now that we've looked at it, we problem solved exactly how to put this on this kind of level. What does this color look like by itself? So let's go ahead, I'm gonna flip this over. There we go. I'm making a mess. Vivids are always messy, man. Look how pretty this is. Uh, that's funny. I actually have the same color next to it. <laughs> my formulas typically uh, kind of run the same. I guess I've formulated so many colors in the past couple years that I've learned exactly what looks good whenever it comes to different levels of hair. Uh, not me who actually just did this color a week ago on a girl who whose hair does not lift ever. She normally has pinky colored hair like me, but yeah, look how pretty that is. Ta-da! So this was, whenever it, it oxidizes too, you can kind of see just how better, how much better this looks now that it's all blended together instead of just it being nightfall by itself. Whenever it comes to colors, you really, really want to make sure that you're studying exactly what you're doing and picking a color line that you're interested in. Um, I find whenever people get a little too like, excited with something they tend to like branch out to too many color lines and then you get lost in translation of not understanding exactly what's going on with your colors so I picked Fall Riot years ago because they had such a vast amount of colors available and now they're just continuing to keep adding more and more and more um, that really helps me hone in on vivids and learning and understanding exactly what I'm doing when it comes to doing vivid hair <laughs> Hey, Jacob. <laughs> I think the next thing that we need to discuss, though, is um, what happens when you're removing the bits, and how do I know like how to move on from there? So everybody knows the hardest colors in hair to remove is red and blue. Why? Red color pigments are huge. 
The color molecules of it are very difficult to be broken down. They don't tend to slip out of the cuticle of the hair very easily. Blue color molecules are super small, which while you would think, you know, reverse wise, it would just come out easily, it does not. They stay in there and they stain the hair and it is one of the hardest things. That in yellow, oh my God, so difficult to remove. So when it comes to removing them and making sure that you're still utilizing your color map, what I like to do is I'll use like a bleach alternative, color remover, DDL by Malibu, uh, Pulp Riot makes one. My favorite one though that I like to use is by um, Matrix, and I think I'm actually out of it. I have so many color removers here, Jesus Christ. So these are just a couple of the ones that I like to use. CPR is for permanent color, let me take that one out. Uh, Blade Canvas, Pulp Riot. Bleach Alternative, you can use water, you can use six volume, 10 volume, 20 volume, anything you want. Well, what happens when you're removing your client's color and their blue is turning pink or their green is turning yellow? How do we counteract that? Where do we go from there? So everybody had to learn color theory whenever we were in school, but I feel like that's something that a lot of people forget about whenever it comes to doing vivids. Your color theory means everything in the hair game. So getting a color book that has a color theory wheel is so important. This is probably my number one tool that I use and this is also Pulp Riot's book, which is great because right here it shows color families and it tells you exactly where they're broken down into within your color map. This obviously works for uh, permanent colors. This isn't a formulation cheat for vivid colors, but it still works the same way. Because if my client's hair, let's say it's blue and they had a green undertone, actually, uh, Pulp Riot's Noir, which is black, uh, lifts out pink when you go to remove it, which is nuts. It has pink in it, which I would have never guessed with a black hair color. But how do we neutralize that pink? Well, you can go back to your color wheel here and you can look across and see that it would be a lime green color. So what would I use? Pulp well, Riot just came out with this color recently. And I have to say, I'm very impressed with it. I used it in a formula recently, and I'm, I'm in love. This right here, Aftermath, this is a metallic green color. So when your client is at the bowl, and you just rinse out your color remover, and you're like, ooh, sis is funky, she's pink, oh my god, this is not what we want. We want a cool tone color. What do I do? You can always grab a vivid color and use it as a pre-toning canceler. So it comes out of the tube, this silver green color, and it looks very, very silvery here on your color map. But as it tends to oxidize and develop over time, it has just this very, very light minty green color to it, which is absolutely perfect for canceling out those pinky undertones. You can also, too, if you ever need help um, with it, let's say your client's pink, you need to put green on it, but you don't know exactly what green, you wanna make sure you're not grabbing too much green, you can always grab this and some conditioner, mix them together in your hands, run it through your client's hair in small pieces, and make sure that the hair is still wet because wet hair will dilute it even more. And that will help cancel out some of that color. And then you just leave it on for a couple minutes and then rinse it off. I use Caracolor with this too, but I like doing it with my vivids. Um, another thing that I learned the hard way was when your client's hair turns green at the bowl. So I had a client of mine last year that came in for a color correction that had half and half split dye. Half of it was pink, half of it was like this turquoise baby blue color. It was a very weird color. Um, I bleached her roots out, I color removed her, and then half of her head was blonde and the other half of her head was uh, green. It was green. And I did not know what to do. But luckily enough for me, we were going purple. We were doing this beautiful metallic purple silver color. Very similar to like what this color was. And so I grabbed the closest thing that I could think of, which was Pulp Riot's Rose Gold Toner. So the cool thing about these toners whenever it comes to pre-toning hair is that they are non-leveled. 
if that makes sense. They are just pure pigment. So the way to make them either stronger or more diluted is you use more developer. So these are very tricky to learn, but God, when you learn them, they are so worth it. I tone all of my clients with these colors now. So they come in a tube. These are oxidative colors. Um, I use six thallium with them, and I do typically a one to three ratio. So you don't need a lot of this, just maybe like 10 grams of it, and do your three ratio. Super easy, perfect. This will counteract any green or bluish pigments that are pastel. I'm not talking blue. Don't put this on a blue girl and expect it to like work because it's not going to. Whenever I say like pastel, I mean like it's it's that color that you get left over after you bleach it. And I'm sure a lot of you guys watching it know exactly what I'm talking about. That's where your rose gold is going to come into play. This stuff is so powerful. You can make it not as powerful, but I keep mine pretty damn strong. I left this on her hair for about 15 minutes and just kept running it through, rubbing it in, mucking it through. I do this with my hair. I like kind of mush it and then I roll it back in there. That gets that into that cuticle enough to really eat away at some of that green and dilute it. Because whenever you go back to your color map or your color view, green, pink, it goes vice versa. So understanding that, making sure that you know both ways around that color wheel is going to be your best friend whenever it comes to doing colors. Well, now my client's hair is pink and we're doing a purple metallic color that doesn't really flow, right? You got a warm color and you're going to a cool color. What do you do next? Well, that's whenever understanding your color map is going to come into play. Even though that these aren't uh, cool based, they're warm based, it's really helpful. So what I did for her was I actually used this one right here and I think I may even have her color in this booklet to be honest with you because I use this thing like crazy. This is my number one go-to when it comes to coloring. Let's see, where are you? I believe these were her colors here. You can kind of see how I went from like mucky lavender to blue to blue to blue to purples, trying to figure out exactly where. I wish I had it. I bet you I ripped it off and I gave it to her. Um, God dang, I do a lot of colors. Uh, <laughs> I use that thing like crazy. Um, whenever it came to her hair though, I remember using this color by Matrix, which I just showed Josh this because this was nuts to me. This color is green when it comes out to It is a mucky, ugly green color. Like, I got one. Wrong one, Amber. Where's the other one? Oh crap. There it is. Okay. Look at that. It's green. It's supposed to be stonewashed denim. Where in the world would you see this and be like, oh yeah, that looks blue to me. It's not. This is green as hell. I wasted a whole tube of it in my trash can because I thought it was old and like maybe not mixed up properly. So when it came to counteracting that pink that was still in her hair, I went in with Nightfall, which is a dark denim blue, um, Velvet, which is this really pretty purple color, and then, oh God, God only knows what else because I typically just throw a whole kitchen sink in somebody's hair when I'm mixing up. And now they have this really pretty purple that I like a lot. I'm trying to think what else. What else should we finally? What about, uh, like you said, you start with the three bases. And yeah. Then you go okay, up. yeah, I can do that. So this is another one. Let's <clears throat> see. Let, let's see. Man, let's think of a color that um, is hard to formulate. At all. Or what I can I'm trying to think of a color that I want to formulate because this is how I typically formulate new I got it okay so I have a client of mine that has a hair color very similar to mine except she doesn't like it too red and she doesn't like it too dark and she doesn't like it too pink but she wants pink magenta hair make it make sense because it doesn't sometimes but I love her to death um so here's what I did the first appointment that I've ever had with her is how I formulated her color so I would take all of my reds and pinks that I kind of had, and we would sit there together. So I'm gonna use two 
two. I'm just going to use two bowls this time. Typically, I have like two or three bowls that I use and kind of mess with back and forth. This is also going to look very similar to my hair color, but we're not going to go into it just yet. Okay, so fireball. This is also something that I feel like you guys should be doing with your clients as well. Where? I just had it. So, in a perfect world, let's say my client is this nice, beautiful, white hair color. She wasn't, but this is how I formulate new colors for my clients. And this is something that we actually do together. So, let me take these out real quick so they're not in my way. Because I can't stand whenever they are. So let's say that your client's main color is a red. Okay, so what I always do whenever I'm formulating is I take two bowls. Please note that this is not wasting any product. Okay, so I put my two reds in a bowl because I know that this is the main color that I want to use because it's an orange red. Look how pretty that is. I sample it out. And I do this in front of my clients. I do this with them. It is something that we, we both co-mix together. And this one, I'm gonna add just a little bit more Countess, which that's Countess, which is this really pretty pinky red color. And in this one, I'm gonna do Fireball instead. Fireball and Pyro actually look very, very similar. That's Pyro, that's Fireball, that's Countess. This allows my clients to truly see exactly what colors we're doing. And they can go, well, you know what, I don't really like this one, or I like this one more. They can choose exactly what colors they want in their own formulas. This, no, I'm sure a lot of people are probably like, that's too much work, I ain't doing that shit. When I tell you I do this with every single one of my clients and they always come back and they love it, Y'all should really start involving your clients more in their hair coloring process because they like stylists that are educated and like to educate them in what's going on in their hair. I'm not saying everybody, but God, the majority of the people that I've helped, they like it. This is Blush by Pulp Riot. It's a very baby pink. I added it into both bowls. So this one's Countess. This one has Fireball in it. I'm gonna add some candy into, let's see what kind of candy looks like. Candy is this really pretty neon pink color. And I think candy is gonna play well with this one. Okay, and then let me add in this. Some Deviant. Deviant is a new color by Pulp Riot. I'm still playing with it, still trying to figure it out. Um, but so far, I've added it into a couple formulas and I really like it. Deviant is a very purple color. So, so far we've maxed out all of our colors. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and start mixing them up. I'm going to add Deviant into both of these because I do want to create a darker uh, reddish color. Oh God, I think I just put hair color all over my face. It's not a day if I don't leave absolutely covered in hair color. So we're gonna mix this up. Okay, and then we're gonna mix up this one. Ooh. Okay, so this is crazy. You guys may not be able to tell, but I can definitely tell. Can you see the difference in the colors? This one had Countess in it, and this one had Fireball in it. Look how metallic and dark this one looks compared to this one. This one is definitely more flaming red, whereas this one is more like my actual hair color. My hair color is a little bit different than this one. So now we're gonna swatch them out. This is where the funness of this product comes into play because now I can show my client both of these colors swatched out and I can let them decide which one they want. I'm talking candy apple red versus, I would say that looks like a, like a red velvet red. How cool is this? Can you imagine doing this with your clients and them going, you know, I like this one more for this reason and I think that that would fit my skin tone better. 
Because at the end of the day, it's their hair. They should be able to make the decision of what they want on their own head. Um, after I'm done with all this, let's say my client liked this one more. Oh, I almost dropped that on the floor. I'm going to go ahead and mix this in there. That way nothing really got wasted and I understand exactly what I put into that bowl. So then I can just mix them up together. I always make little noises, I'm sorry. It's such a habit of mine. Okay. And then, ta-da. Ooh, that color's actually really pretty. Whenever you mix them all up. And then let's say that your client's hair is not that level. I always do this too because like, I don't want to get it all over my color book. Bam. Let's see what it looks like on this level. That's pretty. Can we go darker? Can I put this down here on this color? Oh yeah, you can. Look at that pretty that is. It's like a blood red on this level. That's pretty. I like this. I want to do this on somebody's head now. Another cool thing about this color map, whenever it comes to swatching out colors, I've seen people do the dots like this with all their new vivid colors that they have and they'll write down what the color swatch is. Because like we don't get color swatches or vivids. You get a booklet that shows, oh and you can tear it too. So like I can rip it. I I used to have a binder that kept all of my uh my clients formulas in them. So I would write down exactly what colors they were and like kind of like the ratios of what I used and then I would staple it to the papers in my binder, which are really nice. Obviously, I don't do that now because like all of my vivids are like one-time colors. That makes sense. None of my vivids really stay within the same vivid family. We typically change their hair color up every couple months. But this is a really good utilizing tool. And the paper's thick. Like, I don't know if you guys can tell. This is almost like canvas material. It's absorbent. It does dry. See, like, watch. It's not going to smear onto my skin. I would have laughed if it would have. I would have literally died laughing just now. But, yeah. It's absorbent. It oxidizes your colors. Well, I mean, not oxidizes. I wouldn't say it oxidizes it. It absorbs it down, just like our hair would, which is really cool. Um, so, now that we did that, this is how I create my colors with my clients. And I understand that, like, not everybody works in a small studio space. I did get hair color all over my face. Um, like, I do. Like, this is my little room. It's just me and my client in here hanging out. Um, but it's still something that even whenever I worked in a really big salon, I would put all of my materials that I thought I would need on my color tray. And I would just bring it up to my client and be like, hey, let's figure this out together. Let's create some colors. This really helps your clients feel way more in tuned with the service. It helps them understand what's going on. They leave here feeling educated and they know that you're educated. So it makes them want to come back to you. Using tools like this are so important in the hair salon because anybody can go to a hair girl and be like, just put some purple on it, and then their hair looks like crap. And they can't understand why. Well, guess what? Becky in the bag just grabbed one tube of purple and threw that on there with little to no education on underlying pigment, levels, understanding exactly what's going on, or even understanding their own color tube. You guys really need to, like, Step it up in the hair world and challenge yourselves and start using tools like this because they're there for a reason. This thing grew my business tremendously whenever I started doing Vivids a couple years ago because it gave me an opportunity to sit there and talk with my clients and color things out and figure out what worked and what didn't work. Or if something wasn't hitting right, why was it not working? One of my most popular colors that I've ever done is this really bright, vivid red, almost very similar to this. But with her, she wanted that aerial red without any orange in it. Do you guys know how to cancel out orange in a red hair color? No, probably not. And if I told you adding blue, it makes sense, right? Like blue cancels, it cancels out red, but blue can also help cancel out the orange color without canceling out too much of your red. 
but what tone of blue? Would you use something like this or this? Oh God, or even maybe a Nevermore, which is a blue-based uh, lavender color. This is the kind of things that you really have to learn whenever you're wanting to step your foot into vivids, is understanding what tonal and what level, what depth you need when it comes to canceling things out. So for instance, this color right here, right? We just created it, it's this really beautiful candy apple red. It is very orange. So what would I use typically to cancel this out? Of course I don't have it. It was a color that Pulp Riot used to have. It was called Nirvana. It's now called Tragic. Um, I don't think I have a decoy, which is too green. Yeah, I don't have any of it with me, but we're gonna try this out. I'm gonna use decoy. I'm gonna show you guys what this looks like. Pray for me because I don't even know what this looks like. All right, actually that's not bad. Ner uh, Tragic is a lot bluer than this color is. So we're going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to add a drop. Do not go crazy with your colors because like literally overpowering it will ruin the entire thing. So make sure that you're not trigger finger happy when it comes to squeezing these damn tubes. And I go dot for dot until I get to the true color of what I'm wanting, which is just a pure red and not an orange red basically a cool toned red. Sometimes too, if you find that your blue is not powerful enough because this blue really isn't, it's very faint. So it's a true sky blue, I would say. Um, you can always kick it up a little bit more, but keep in mind, like let's say you have a whole entire bowl of light of color and you accidentally mess that up by putting in too much pigment. Well, then you've like shot yourself in the foot and you got to throw that all away. And that's a mistake that you cannot charge your client for. Don't be a shitty human. If you mess up, you mess up. You eat that shit on the chin. <laughs> Cause look, I'll be hearing some horror stories. All right, guys. Oh, I like this color a lot more now. I like this. I think this is pretty. Wait, where's my little, where'd it go? Oh my love. Oh, I tore it. I was like, where is it? Okay, so let's see. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like that. It's a cool toned red. Now, it still has a little bit of reflect of a red red, but I feel like this is a more truer red than anything, than uh, orangey based red, because watch, you can kind of see. That's Fireball, and that's the color that we've created. See how similar they are, where it's this one, that one is a little bit more orange, and this one looks like a truer, like a Crayola red almost. I like this. This is really, really good to know how to do this, how to change it up. Now, let's say that I wanted to make that same red more pink and switch it back. I could add orange to it. Oh, what orange? Let's do this one. As this bowl, we're just gonna be throwing some shit in a bowl and we'll look at it. Ooh. Okay. That's an interesting color. Also, another thing that I really, really love about Pulp Riot is their colors come in different intensities. So these right here, this is neon yellow. This is a, well, I call it neon yellow. This just stinks bright yellow. This is a neon orange. Why did my brain almost said purple? It's a neon purple. I feel like I just made this really beautiful like sunflower orange color. Let's see. Let's try this out. See if this looks good. Ooh. Oh, this is pretty. 
We took that same red color and added some orange and yellow to it, and now it looks like a burnt, like, 70s orange. I want to put this on my head now. Right? Isn't this pretty? Let's see how dark we can go with it, though, if it's still going to show up or not. Eh. So this would definitely be a color to be used higher up in your color map. Yes, I like that. I'm going to put this on my client's head this week. Look at that. This is what's so great about this, is you can look at it for what the true color of it is on these other levels, but then you can just see just how dark you can actually go down with it. This color is beautiful. I'm going to need uh, somebody to put this on now. Any, any of you guys like orange hair? Let's do some orange hair. I'm just, I'm just having to rewatch this video and remember what I did on it. Okay, so I kind of showed you guys how to switch colors up, how to change everything back and forth, how to go absolutely nuts with it, how to use your color map, how good it is to use your color map, when you should use your color map. I honestly use mine all the time, even if I'm not using vivids and stuff like that. Um, I think now... What do we talk about? Should we formulate my hair color? Because I feel like my hair color is pretty crazy. I don't know. I, so far, the couple people that I've told, told about it, they're like, what? You did what? You put what in there? Like, yes. Which, I mean, kind of covers what we talked about. So let me get rid of some of these. All right, so my color is Majority Pyro. We've already swatched this out. We know what it looks like. It's this dark, beautiful red color. My next color that I put in my head is Countess. Countess is this really beautiful, dark, pinky, red velvet color. But the cool thing, let me see if I can get this up close. Can you guys see how metallic that is? It has a shimmer to it, whereas that one doesn't. Isn't that cool? Like, I love it. It's literally the same color. It's just one is more metallic, blurred out, and the other one is still intense. My next color that I put in it is nightfall this dark blue i only put a little bit of it boop and then my last color i'm gonna switch it up on y'all i use royal purple the reason i use purples from matrix is because i find like they give me a true purple color this is purple this is not no pink this ain't no deviant this is straight up Look at that. That is purple if I've ever seen it in my life. I haven't found another color that comes out like this. Pulp Riot has velvet. And it's beautiful. Don't get me wrong. But it is not the same. It's too pink. And not all, like literally, look at that. Royal Purple by Matrix. Pulp Riot's velvet. This is Pulp Riot's purple color. That's not purple to my like artistic brain. To me, that's a pinky toned purple, and that is not gonna give me the results of what I'm going for if I'm trying to create a deep, luscious purple color on a client. So don't be afraid to try out new color lines, people, because they can be your best friend. So Pyro, Countess, Nightfall, and a dot of royal purple. Also, Whenever it comes to like co-mixing your color lines, make sure, I have the hiccups now, make sure you do your research because not all color lines are created equally. Um, some of them will in fact um, process for longer than others. I need to add more pyro into this because I do typically use a lot more of a ratio of pyro in my color. There we go. Bam. Done. Easiest thing in the world. Uh, the reason I put my blue in there is because it cancels out any of the orange because I don't want an orange base. Oh, somewhere. I don't want an orange base red. I want a dark red. So that would be if my hair was yellow. You can still see some of those orange undertones. Um, if I wanted to make it more pink, I would simply add in. Um, not counts as uh, fireball because fireball is very pinky red. But 
The velvet in it too gives it this really pretty color. Puts it on. Let's see. Bam. Of course, I washed my hair this morning, so now my hair is fading out. But that's my hair color. I made a cool base red, which is very difficult sometimes. But understanding your color line and understanding your underlying pigments and using this thing is going to be your best friend. It'll help grow your business. It helped grow mine, that's for sure. I've been using that booklet for three years now. I've formulated almost all of my clients' colors on them. I've even had my clients flip through this thing and go, you know what, I really like this color. Do you remember what this is? And I'm like, I can figure it out. I can re-look at my color tubes that I have in stock and see what's going on with them. And we typically hit it perfectly. Um, I will also add, as we're wrapping this up, uh, color map is changing and we're going to be coming up with some new color sheets. So stay tuned for that in the future. So with that being said, I would love to hear back from y'all. What swatches y'all love the best? Which ones haven't worked for y'all and which ones y'all like to see? Yeah, I think, I think adding more whites and more pale yellows would be, would be a hitter. Yeah. So feedback we've been getting so far at least four pale yellows at least four whites teals and pinks Ooh. yeah which we talked about Color we talked shifting. about that it'll but, help you guys out a lot what's your instagram so give me uh, a follow spectrum studio.la is my instagram and then i go by amber page on facebook so you guys should go follow me there i typically do facebook lives fairly often uh while i'm doing colors on my clients and we do education on there too so awesome. Yeah, thank you, Josh. Oh, thank you very much for having me. Oh, uh, it's doing great. This. I yeah. learned a lot today, too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to teach you some stuff, man. Oh, yeah. I'm going to teach you some stuff. This was fun. Perfect. I, I, uh, I have another class coming up next month, too. Fingers crossed. I'm going to try and get in with a salon to teach some uh, color on an actual model. That's Lafayette, Louisiana? Yes. yes. I'll be out here in Lafayette. So um, I'm going to get with Josh and see if maybe we can co op together. And uh, That'd be great. do you guys have anything that y'all want to see? Like, if y'all want to see how to take a client from a from a virgin hair to a vivid or color switching your vivid clients, whatever, drop some comments and let us know or message us and let us know what y'all want to see, what's really difficult. That's it. Yeah. Y'all have Thank a wonderful guys. day. Thank you. Have a good Monday. We did it. I feel so awkward.